Welcome back to another Sunrise 2.x tutorial video. Today's topic of discussion will be on the brake test for the LBR. So let's first talk about the principle of the brake test and why it could be or is necessary on the LBR. So the principle of the brake test is in order to eliminate avoidable risk uh, by detecting any impairments in the braking function, whether that's wear in the brakes due to overheating, fouling, or damage. It essentially is used to check whether the brakes of each axis supply a sufficient amount of braking torque if needed to apply the brakes in the event of a safe reaction. So essentially, when you execute the brake test within Sunrise, the axis will supply a certain amount of torque and it will have applied the brakes on that axis and assuming that the brakes can hold uh, a set minimum amount of torque uh, applied by the axis, then it will be considered a successful brake test for that axis. In order for all, or in order for the brake test to pass, all seven axes have to pass the brake test. Now that we have a preliminary understanding of the brake test on the LBR, let's go ahead and run through a Sunrise example app that we can synchronize to our controller, which will allow us to actually execute the brake test on our robot. There's two ways to get this example application. The first one being to right click on our com.tutorial.examples, do a new Sunrise application, drop down the example from template folder and the LBR EVA folder. And here we have access to an application for the brake test of an LBR EVA. This application will also work on an LBR MED. Now, if this application is grayed out, uh, just like mine is, and I cannot finish this uh, setup of a new application, you will actually need to pull the code from the link in the description. So the link in the description will lead you to a GitHub gist for discovering robotics in which you can pull the code from there and pull it into your project. So now let's just briefly walk through the brake test monitor sample app to give you a high level overview of the brake test. So first, if we look at line 62, we can see we have a brake test monitor object. If we go to the Java docs for the iBrake test monitor interface, we can see the different methods that we can leverage. Here we can execute the brake test uh, for all joints. We can execute the brake test for a single joint. We can get the brake test results, get the states of the brake test, um, check if it's either executable, if it's postponable, because um, if the brake test hasn't been postponed more than three times, we can actually postpone the brake test, and we'll talk a little bit more about why that might be useful in the future. We can add in different listeners as well. So these can be called um, whenever a single brake test has been finished, or if there's not enough space on the um, disk to write the status of the brake test, um, and or it can be called if the monitoring state has changed. On line 63, we can look at the e-brake test monitor state as well. So these are different enums that tell us the, the state machine for the brake test. So if the brake test aired out, um, if it's currently executing, if all brakes have been um, executed successfully and there's no errors. So one important thing to note is the difference between error and fatal. Now, if a brake test fails on the first time, then it will uh, error out to the error enum and if it fails a second time in a row then it will go to the fatal state. At the fatal state this is when the robot is officially locking all motions and it literally cannot be unlocked and the only way to actually unlock the robot is by actually sending the robot back to Germany or they're going to check the integrity of the brakes and replace and repair any brakes that um, do not meet the minimum require specifications. Now if we jump back into the example app, uh, how do we actually instantiate this brake test monitor object? We do this by accessing the get capability method through the robot object here and we just pass in the iBrake test monitor dot class parameter. This will initialize the brake test monitor object and allow us to um, do things like getting the state, um, checking if the brake test is executable, actually doing the brake test execution. Uh, we can also set a notification timeout. So this will 
uh, notify us when a brake test is getting ready to be due. The last thing that I just want to briefly touch on um, is the uh, getting the brake test results. So after the brake test is finished, we can actually use the iBrake test event to get the brake test results, and that will return us a map. And the map contains an integer, which is the joint ID, and also it will return the e-brake test result. And this will allow us to see the status of the brakes uh, for each joint, whether it was successful and or an error. So this will allow us to know if a, if a brake did fail, which brake is failing on the robot. So let's talk about the timeline criteria for when a brake test needs to be ran. So if you're an LBR EVA customer, this brake test is completely optional. It's just a way to eliminate avoidable risk just by detecting any impairments in the braking function. Now, if you're an LBR med customer, on the other hand, then it is a mandatory requirement. The first criteria is that the initial brake test is always due one hour after boot up. This time limit cannot be changed. And after one hour, if the brake test has not been executed, all motion will be ceased until there has been a successful execution of the brake test. The second criteria is the max time between brake test uh, can be set to eight hours. Um, the only exception to this obviously is the initial brake test time constraint, which cannot be changed. The third criteria is that the brake test can be postponed up to three times total. So with the eight hour limit uh, between brake test and allowing us to postpone it up to three times, this effects, effectively gives us a max possible time of 24 hours between sequential brake test. So now let's just briefly discuss a few common questions and concerns regarding the brake test. The first question being, what happens if my brake test is due during an operation or a surgery? How does the robot respond? How can I avoid this happening? So if you have an operation or a surgery that takes two hours and the brake test is due in an hour, during the operation, when the brake test is due, the robot will cease motion. This doesn't mean that the application layer and the safety layer will stop. The application on the robot and the safety on the robot will continue to be active. It's just that any motion command in Sunrise that's sent to the motion planner will not be executed. So the robot just will not move until there is a successful brake test. Now to avoid this, what you can do is in your pre-op, check to make sure that there will be no brake test due during the operation. And if there is, just do the brake test right then and there, and that will reset the timeout timer for the brake test. The second question is, what happens if my brake test fails twice in a row? We've briefly discussed this. This just means that the brake has been compromised due to maybe damage from a stop zero reaction, and it's considered in a fatal state. This will require that the robot will be sent back to Germany for repairs. The final question is, does the brake test timeout timer start right after the brake test, or does it start right after the first motion? So as of Sunrise OS Med 2.6.5, the brake test timeout timer starts right after the brake test has finished. However, in the future release of Sunrise OS Med 2.7, this feature is scheduled to change uh, such that the brake test timeout timer will actually start right after the first motion has occurred. This will help hospitals in the pre-op so that when they start up the robot and then the robot sits for a half an hour to an hour before the operation starts, this will allow the robot to have a little bit more flexibility in when the brake test will be due because the timeout timer will not have been started until the procedures actually um, began. So with that, that will conclude our tutorial on the brake test. Mm -hmm.